And it's just sort of inevitable. 10 years from now, every car that's sold is going to have some type of self-driving. And What do you think are the, like, the five key things of full self-driving that really astonished you even even if if the time frame is a little bit uh, like earlier or something you can maybe you have something like the five key things that that really struck you hmm well it's definitely been an eye opening experience when you experience it you have many realizations that are not entirely obvious before you've used it so probably the first one was that it's possible to drive a car safely using just computer vision no radar, no yeah. ultrasonics. They took that all out just using the vision system. Now, I'm a big autopilot fan. When I heard they were removing the radar, removing the ultrasonics, I thought they were crazy. Mm -hmm. I said, well, how can you yeah. accurately know the distance to the car without radar? Is it going to be safe? And here I am a year later, <laughs> I use it for 95% of my driving. It actually works. That's crazy. And not only does it work, If it's rainy, if it's foggy, in all kinds of really difficult mm -hmm. conditions, it works perfectly. And again, I, I use it for 95% of my driving. So that was very surprising and counterintuitive that that's possible. But once you realize it is, you go, okay, wow, there are so many benefits to this. They can now cheaply add this technology into any car and give that safety benefit to people. They can now have a system, you know, people say, oh, You know, the vision system will never be good enough. You need other sensor modalities. But if you can make the vision system very strong, then even if you add other sensor yeah, modalities in the future, like radar and LIDAR, and they fail, let's say because of a rock hit them or bad weather or something, you still have this very safe vision system. So it's actually very good to make the vision system really safe. Yeah. Then the next thing that really struck me was that even today in its limited state, where it's far, far behind really what a human can do in many ways, it can already start to see things that I miss. For example, it starts moving because it notices the light's green before I notice the light's green. It's, it actually slowed down for a yellow light before I noticed that the light was yellow. It noticed a pedestrian that I didn't see, right? And I said, oh, what's it stopping for? Oh, there's actually a pedestrian coming, right? Or when there's a cyclist coming up behind me, It just moves over. And I go, what's it moving over for? Because the cyclist is still behind me. I haven't seen it. But the car has already seen that it's coming, right? And so it moves over. And if it was going to make a right turn, it already knows that guy's coming. It doesn't even have to look over the shoulder. It's always looking in every direction. So this was the realization because you hear so many people say, well, you can't have it until it's safe. You can't have it until it's safe. But then you realize, wow, there's actually a lot of safety benefits, even in a very primitive state when it's far away from being driverless. This is a really powerful capability to have, not only when you're driving, but running all the time as an active safety feature, alerting you, you know, stopping you, uh, that sort of thing. I think it's, it's really sort of profound. I'm not sure, you know... <laughs> what the other five things are necessarily. There's probably a list of a hundred things, but those are two of the things that really struck me. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely surprised at how fast it's gotten to a place where most of my drives are now zero takeover around California with the software using just computer vision. And they give you some stats in the app and mm -hmm. it handles about 90 to 95% of my miles driven. So that's pretty profound, I think. Yeah, that's absolutely astonishing uh, to to hear that also. And um, if you if you um, would go back to a regular car, um, have you experienced that again? And and have you how <laughs> how how did it feel? Were you like more anxious and stuff because it, oh god, I have to look at everything. So how you are are used to your um, experience? That would also interest the audience maybe. Because um, we don't yeah. have it here. Yeah. So this has been widely discussed among people who have it. And what they report among the people who get used to it is that it's addictive. Mm -hmm. Once you get used to having it, getting into a car that doesn't <laughs> have it, and you have to drive yourself the whole time, oh, not God. even for a second, you can't give it control. It's very frustrating. You're like, why do I have to do all this stupid mm -hmm. stuff, pushing these pedals, turning this wheel? When I know that a car could be able to figure out these things itself, okay, I have to hit the brake, I have to mm -hmm. steer. So 
it very much is something that people are going to get used to and they're going to get stuck on it and they're going to say, this is all I can get. And I know a lot of people who said, you know, I really like a Rivian or one of these other EVs. I, I really like this other EV, but autopilot and FSD on one hand and supercharger networks on the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to just stick with the Tesla. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's sort of a very important uh, lock-in factor. And it's also, you know, people show their friends, they end up wanting to get one too. So it's a very powerful thing. And when it comes to Asia and Europe, you, I think you're definitely going to see an effect on sales where mm. it's one of the big differentiators of a Tesla compared to other EVs. And people don't realize that if you buy a Tesla in Europe or even if you have a 2018 Model 3, it can run this much more advanced software. You don't know. You've never seen it. But this year, I think people will start to see it in Europe and they'll say, holy cow, I had mm. no idea that my car could do these things because it's going to be even bigger in Europe than it is in America because number one, you know, even for old autopilot, like Los Angeles and California are so simple. Even the old basic autopilot lane keeping could basically take you all around California because yeah, our because roads are so straight and simple yeah. with Europe. You have a lot more of that complication, mm -hmm. pedestrians, roundabouts, the stuff that FSD beta does and you guys are going to get it when it's at a much more advanced stage than when we first got it. Yeah. So I think people are just going to be completely blown away when they see what it can do. And it's only a matter of time. People say, oh, you know, re regulations, whatever. But as the European automakers start to want to offer their own products, the regulations will move because any place that does not have autonomy or is behind on autonomy is not going to be able to be economically competitive with the mm. places that have it. So it's going to be a very important thing, even sort of an important national security thing. And people are going to be surprised by how fast the technology spreads around the world, because at the end of the day, it's a life-saving technology. Exactly, yeah. And regulators want to save lives. If they can see the data mm. that, okay, having this technology can really help reduce crashes, then they will support it, at least as an active safety feature. So I think at the very least, you'll see highway autopilot just completely re replaced with the new FSD beta stack this year. And hopefully you'll also get the city streets beta start in uh, UK, Netherlands, at least some European countries. Yeah, I, I also hope that that uh, it, it comes sooner than later, um, because also here... Um, Yeah, we also need these safety features, of course. And I think it's going to be a huge, like you said, selling factor here as well. The um, I think the benefits on German roads especially is that we our markings are always flawless here, uh, like very right. bright and everything. You can see everything very mm -hmm. good and they're replaced very often. So if, if something <laughs> is, is not really visible and clear, they're going to um, um, just paint it new. And so the Germans are very proud on their... <laughs> Streets. That's good. Yeah, but uh, so so the markings are very good. Um, here we have a different system with the with the um, uh, li uh, traffic lights. They are on our side, not on the opposite side of the street. So that's a little bit. But that's the easy thing for the car. He it can see better because that's also a factor. We always have to lean over, and or or <laughs> the, there is a second one on the left sometimes. But the B pillar is sometimes uh, blocking the view or yeah. obstructing. So that, so that so, should help. Yeah. It'll just show yeah. everything right on the screen. Exactly. You don't have to look. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, and also think um, even if Germany is a little bit slow and delaying everything and, and saying, oh, no, wait, uh, let's just artificially slow it down and wait until <laughs> Mercedes catches up more. And then I, I think they, <laughs> they are uh, in behind closed doors are making some deals. I don't really know, but uh, I assume so. <laughs> uh, but um, if... If they witness that, and and the U.S. has has FSD like open for like one or two years, how how many years do they want to sit on the sideline? I I, I don't think right. they they will do that, and especially if they see that it's it really has benefits for safety, then they gonna adapt it. I think very fast uh, in Germany as well. And then Mercedes has a huge problem. Maybe they can, uh, I don't know, maybe what do you see with the future of FSD in comparison to the competition more or less? Because we all know they really don't have a chance of uh, doing it with, with LiDAR more or less because it's not cost competitive. Because if you, even if it works with that as well, um, 
if you calculate it down, uh, FSD is more valuable and uh, easier mm -hmm. to update because it's just going to put an update in. Cameras are cheap. Just put it in. Yeah. And what do you think? Maybe do you think Tesla will license uh, this software or, or this this hardware and software or this technology to competitors? Do you think? Yeah, I do think they'll license it out. It makes sense. It costs very little to give them the hardware, and it's better to just get everyone on your software, collect all the data. And I think they'll sort of have to do that. You can then leverage everybody else's production. Elon has said he's open to this, so you know it really just is inevitable. You can't stop it. It's like saying, you know, European regulators are going to block the smartphone. Yeah. Sure, they could, you know, they could in theory put a law and say, okay, smartphones are not allowed. But it's like the force of technology that's mm -hmm. so powerful, so disruptive that the whole world is changing around you. You can try and fight it, but, you know, you can't win long term, right? AI is just a really powerfully disruptive force that's going to uh, transform our economies. I mean, one, one feature Tesla is working on is automatic collision avoidance. So what automatic collision avoidance does is it uses the FSD beta vision system, the same vision system that drives the car. And it runs when you're driving the car yourself. Ah, mm -hmm. And it, it won't allow, allow you to crash automatic collision avoidance. So If you try and hit something, it'll break. If you try and steer into something, it'll move your steering wheel the other way mm. automatically, yeah. right? So what you're really going to see and what their goal is, is to make a car that's impossible to crash, whether you're on automatic or manual. So the regulators are going to say, okay, well, maybe we're not so excited about this driver assistant stuff, but the same technology can actually be used to make these active safety features, That's and then true. at that point, you have the software running on German cars already. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, we already know how to drive the car because in order to provide this active safety feature, you need to have that understanding of the world that's accurate. So why not actually let the car drive itself? And they'll realize that, the you know, when I drive the car, I drive fast. If there's a yellow light, I push harder on the accelerator yeah. to go faster. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I do you know, impatient things, uh, not the, necessarily the safest behavior, but the car software is very safe. If it sees a yellow light and it can't make it across, it'll slow and stop. Yeah. If it sees a pedestrian, a cyclist, it's very courteous of them. It drives within a reasonable, you know, speed limit, right? Yeah. So it, these behaviors are so much safer. So It's actually to the benefit of the public and everyone if most drivers aren't trying to be impatient and drive around if they're just handing it off. And it's just sort of inevitable. Ten years from now, every car that's sold is going to have some type of self-driving. And it's going to be completely unremarkable. It's actually going to seem easy, right? No more remarkable than it is to get on a train and go to its destination. It'll be normal. And kids will grow up and be surprised that we ever even drove ourselves, <laughs> yeah. right? And the interior design will change completely. Mm -hmm. It's sort of an inevitability. There's there's nothing that any government or regulator can do to really stop it. Slow it down, maybe. But ultimately, the regulators just want to make sure things are safe and want to make sure that people don't die on the roads. And when they, you know, if you start to see in the U.S., As this technology is proliferating, crashes and deaths are going down and down and down, and years are not, you're going to say, hmm, you know, we're <laughs> costing lives. Mm -hmm. People Absolutely. are dying because we're prohibiting this technology. So, you know, yeah, Europe's always a little bit slower on things, but 100% they will allow it. And once they allow it, it's just a matter of sending out a software update and boom, everyone's cars are activated. I think people find this very hard to believe. It seems kind of, how could my car just one day start driving itself? Mm -hmm. But I can tell you as somebody who has experienced this and go talk to the Americans who have experienced yes. this, they send the update, you install it, the car then drives itself. Not perfectly, but you'll be able to use it. And let me tell you, your jaw will be on the floor when you find out what your, <laughs> your 2018 or 2019 or 2020 Tesla can do it'll probably be worth significantly more mm. um, than what it was worth before.